certainly have those sentiments and we'll be praying those momentarily. But I wanted to say thank you for a warm welcome here at Hope Lutheran Church. And I'm excited because we just, this whole morning has been a rich expression of God's love in our midst. Seeing baby Rick be brought into the family of God by the power of the Holy Spirit as he's working through the water and the word. What a joyous moment to be together with new friends and old and to be a part of something the Lord is already doing here. It's something I just had to say, this is awesome, right? So we could just say thank you to God for that. And so let's open with a word of prayer as we go into his word and ask him to guide us. Father, we ask you right now to bless us as we study a little bit of your word and ponder the mighty deeds you've done in our midst this very day. And I pray that as we do so, that you would open our hearts, that you would open our minds, that you would help us hear your voice through your word and even through your servant. And Lord, we pray boldly that as we hear you, you would do amazing things in our midst to us and then eventually through us. We ask this not because we have anything to offer, but we ask this because of your grace and your mercy. And we ask you to pour out your perfect peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When I was starting to read the gospel today, I just immediately, my eyes went to verse 16. And I couldn't help myself because I'm very excited that um, this is the scripture that we are having the opportunity to dig into today. For God so loved the world. Now think about that word world, right? It, it includes a lot, right? It, it includes all of the planet Earth. I would argue the entire universe. In fact, if you were to peel open the scripture and to look at the original language which the Apostle John wrote this down in for you and me as the Holy Spirit carried him to write, it's the word cosmos, right? Which is the Greek word for world. And some will say, well, maybe in that time people like John only had a view of the world as just what was around them. They hadn't seen the universe. And then I'm reminded of the psalmist who looks into the starry night and says, behold the heavens of God. You know, they declare the glory of God. And so, for God so loved the world. But also the world is not just the cosmos. It's, it's not just all of the universe. It's not just the whole world. It's also... Our land, our neighborhood, our, the room that we're sitting in, those connected online, and all of the above. And it's also, God so loved, you're, you're in the world, right? You and me. He loved you and me. But now what's interesting is this, this idea of love. Because we live in a world where love, I mean, you know, I used to tell the joke always when we were in Missouri, you know, I love pizza. But that isn't exactly what, what I would mean if I said to my mom, I love you, mom. It's, it's not the same as I love pizza. It's a different word. Well, thankfully, in the Greek language that John was using, they have different words for I love pizza or I love my mom. And the word here is agape. You may have heard that word before. It, it means undeserved loving kindness. It's the kind of love that was poured out through the water and the word on baby Rick. Rick was born into sin. You and I were the same. All people are alike. John, or excuse me, Romans chapter 3. All people fall short of the glory of God and are freely justified through the faith in Jesus Christ that he gives us the ability to have through the waters of baptism, through the word, as the spirit works through all of his means. And he welcomes us into his family because he loves us. See, sometimes we will have this feeling like we have to earn his love. I don't know if you ever feel that way. Like, oh, I messed it up. God's mad at me. You ever think God gets grouchy? I think sometimes, I mean, I'm like, you know, I look at myself and I'm like, hey, he's pretty grouchy. But you know, I don't know if those of you have been parents, maybe even baby Rick's mom and dad might even think about sometimes they might get a little grouchy, especially if Rick wakes up in the middle of the night. I don't know if he ever does. Probably not him, but some children do. And then as they get a little older, I don't know if you've ever had those two-year-olds around the house, they, they might make people grouchy. But does a mom or a dad ever stop loving them? We might ponder it for a second or two. But God is not like us. He's not weak like us. Now, some will say, yeah, but Mark, it's one thing to love your children because they're your children. 
Well, who, whose children are you? I mean, I just say you're God's children. And yes, I think there's a moment when he gets grouchy with this child, I can assure you. I, maybe not for you. But he never stops loving you or me. He never does. In fact, I don't know if you caught the verse that came after John 3, 16, which we know. For God so loved the world, right, that he gave his one and only son that whoever works really hard, oh wait, no, it says believes in him, shall never die but have everlasting life. And the next verse, which gets sometimes forgotten but must not, I will read it to you now. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. We live in a world where I think everybody's pretty grouchy all the time. I don't know if I'm wrong. Have you, has, your, has your mileage varied for mine? Maybe, maybe not. And if you think that maybe that they're all getting along great, just go jump out on the, the freeways and the tollways around town and you'll feel, the, you'll feel the grouchiness, right? And sometimes we have that feeling to be a little grouchy with all of, those, all of that world that is around us. And we forget that the Son was sent to die for the world. That the Son was sent not to condemn the world, but that the Father sent the Son because of agape, because He loves the world, every single one of them, because them is us, because we're all in the world. And He didn't want to condemn the world. He wanted to save the world by the sending of the Son. And He, in fact, is doing so in our midst. There's a story in a recent book by Bob Goff. Uh, the book is called Everybody Always. And um, in this book, he tells the story, and, and if you've ever read any of Bob Goff's books before, you know that he loves to get involved in things that a lot of us would be like, Bob, that's crazy. And, and you know, that's just, he, and one of the things that he did is he went to Uganda and he got involved in the legal system there. He wanted to start bringing justice to the forgotten children of Uganda. One of the things that goes on there is they have witch doctors. And us in our you know, modern sensibilities might think that's no big deal, but I can assure you that witch doctors bring evil everywhere they go because they serve a different God. And they have to do terrible things to make their God happy. And one of the terrible things they do is they will, they will abduct a child and take them out into the bush and mutilate them as a sacrifice to their false god. Now, I don't know about you, but you might be feeling a little swell of grouchiness right now. I know I am when I ponder the evil of that. And, and Bob tells the story about how one day one such witch doctor a name, a, by the name of Kabi went out and kidnapped and abducted Charlie, took him out into the bush, and castrated him with a, with a machete. And we have to just pause for a moment to think about the, the evil that that is. And of course, Bob being Bob, you know, he's this guy, he's like, I want to go help Charlie. And so he wants to, being a Bob being a lawyer, he wants to go and he wants to find the witch doctor and bring him to justice. And through the story, that eventually, through many tasks and turns, happens. And it took a lot to even get the legal system to even bring a witch doctor to justice because they all, everyone in that culture, fears them because they know of their evil powers. That we might think, oh, those aren't real. But I think if you spent a few days in Uganda, you would think otherwise. Because the devil is very real. And for those who seek to serve him and to carry out his, his bidding do very real, terrible things, such as what was done to Charlie. And so the trial ensues, and the witch doctor, Kabi, is convicted. And the people rejoiced because, my goodness, we finally had a victory. We had justice for Charlie. And yet Charlie remained mutilated. Bob, being a man of some means and, and having lots of relationships and people, he shared the story of Charlie, and eventually a surgeon, one of the best in the world, was able to help Charlie recover in large measure. And later we even find out in much greater ways than ever thought possible, praise to the name of Jesus. 
But something gnawed on Bob. And that he was like, you know, for God so loved the... And the last time he checked, copies in the world. Though now in prison. So it kept eating on Bob's heart. Does God love Cobby too? And we all think, well, surely not. What an evil, terrible man Cobby was. That's without dispute. Proven in a court of law. So Bob finally decided to go to the prison where Cobby was held. Very much against his will, but because the Holy Spirit kept elbowing him right in the small of the back. I don't know if that ever happens to you. It's happened to me. And as he does, did so, he went to the prison where Cobby was held, and the warden was like, you want to see who? This guy? The worst of the worst, the darkest of the darkest, the most evil that we can find. And Bob was compelled by this agape that the father had to send the son for the world. And Bob kept it saying, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing. And so, and Bob was the guy that had tried and, and had Cobby convicted. So why would even Cobby want to talk to him? But as the story goes, eventually, it happened. They talked. And Cobby asked him, why are you here? And I'm paraphrasing, but Bob said something to the effect of Jesus. Who is this Jesus? Well, he's the one, you see, that God sent into the world because God does not want to condemn the world. Friends in Christ, this is the good news of Jesus. This is the power of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel. The Apostle Paul writes, as he's carried by the Holy Spirit to write. For it is the power of God for salvation for all who believe. First for the Jew, then also in his day, the radical statement of the Gentile. He might as well have said, first for the child wounded in the bush, and also for the witch doctor that did it. First for the I'm trying to guess here. Republican? And also for the Democrat. Oh my goodness, now we've crossed some lines, have we not? Or you could put it the other way around. Democrat and Republican. The independent. The one who's got it all figured out and the one who's never heard any of the answers, let alone the questions. The one who knows and the one who doesn't know. They're all in the world. They're all people that God loves. They're human beings that are his children. He didn't want Rick to go without the grace and mercy of God. He certainly doesn't want anyone to go without that grace and mercy. Why? Because of agape. The undeserved loving kindness of God. If you read Romans chapter 1 verse 16 where it talks about this power of God. The gospel is the power of God. A couple of verses later, you'll read about the wrath of God. It's being poured out because there's so many people that look at God's love and just say, nah. And then he gives a long list of all the things they do. And oh, as church going folk, we're familiar with that list. It's all the sins that other people commit, not the ones we do. Let's be clear. I don't have any problem with those. I don't know about you guys. No, we're all on that list. We, we just stop reading the list before we get to the part that we're on. But even if we weren't, you keep reading through chapter 1 of Romans. He even says, and there are even these people who give approval to those who do all of that list. And then that's also when Christians stop. Because we have this urge within us Pastor Heckman referred to it when he was reading through the liturgy about the baptism, about this fact that Rick was born into sin, just like all the rest of us. We're born into it. We don't want it. We try not to have it, and it just comes out. And it's this this condemnation thing. We're condemners by default. When I'm on 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 the highway out here and someone pulls in front of me, I don't say, oh, the Lord bless and keep you. That's 
It's not what comes out of my mouth by default. Now, maybe the Holy Spirit's got me really going that day. Maybe there's an awesome song on the radio. I don't know. And maybe I don't that time. But left to my own devices, I don't say the Lord bless and keep you when somebody pulls in front of me. And I don't think I'm the only one with this problem. I think we all have this problem. And what happens is, is we, we, we look at all those people, those people, whoever they are. It's anyone other than us. And we say, sinners. That's what we say. We may not even out, out loud say it, but it's in there. I know it's in there. It's in mine. It's in my heart. But there's this next passage in Romans chapter 1. It's actually the very first verse of Romans chapter 2, where he says, yeah, you do the same things, and then when you condemn others, you condemn yourself. You see, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. John 3, 17 but to save the world through the Son, through Him. So if God is not a condemner, why are we so easily, by our own sin, pulled, pulled into condemnation? It's because of our sin. It's because of our brokenness. It's because of our selfishness. It's because of our self-righteousness. Oh, let us never have a righteousness that is our own. Let us go to our Father in heaven and say, forgive me, O Lord. Help me be a gospeler, a good newser, one who goes around saying, did you know that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him will never perish but will have everlasting life. And, and, don't ever forget that God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world. He's not a condemner, but to save the world through him. Would you believe that Kabi eventually, through some conversation and much prayer, came to know that Jesus was also his Savior? Came to be baptized to brought, be brought into the family of God the same way Rick was. And not only was he baptized, but then later, having very undeveloped theology, he didn't have his doctrines all right, he didn't have all the, 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 the catechesis that you and I have been blessed with, being taught the story of Jesus and taught what we believe as we share and confess and things like the Apostles' Creed like we did today. He started going around and telling everyone that there was this man who had risen from the dead who could save them too. And he started taking a bottle of water, a little, you know, this plastic bottle of water, and he would, he would put a little bit of water on it, and he would baptize people. And he didn't even know. He just I read about baptism. It's in the Bible, and I'm going to do it to you. And more and more people came to know Jesus. And you know why? Because it was the power of the gospel. It was the power of of a human being who, who heard the promises of God and trusted them, believed them, believed that God indeed loves the world. And in the world is you and me and even Kabi. And we're all going to be with the Lord Jesus together in heaven forever. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks and praise for the good news. And I pray boldly that you would open our hearts and minds to the power of the good news, the power of the gospel, that you love the world and every single human in it, no matter their history, no matter their mistakes, no matter their successes, no matter their station, no matter their background, their ethnicity, their language, or their culture. You love us all. Let us all hear that that's not just all y'all, but it's even me. It's even me. So Lord, we pray for each one of us who hear that word, and we ask that we would be strengthened in our faith if we have it, or given faith if we don't. And that all of us would be reminded of the truth of your love. And that is why we pray to you, Father, 
you who live and reign with Jesus, your Son, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.